This is the TurtleBot 2. Well, this is actually the Kobuki which serves as the base of the TurtleBot 2, but we'll ignore that. The TurtleBot 2 is the go-to robotic platform for people learning ROS, the robot operating system. I'm using it here to serve as a guinea pig for the series I've been wanting to create, which is taking your ROS prototype to production with Snaps in Ubuntu Core. This is part one of the video series. This is also a blog series. If you prefer to digest this information in text form, the link is in the description below. Out of the box, ROS is great for research and development. However, what happens when you're ready to ship something? Going to production raises a number of questions, such as, what is my factory process? That is, how do you deploy Ubuntu, ROS, and your own stuff on a device you're about to ship? By hand? A custom seated Ubuntu distro? Some automation tool? All of these options are complicated and take time to learn. With Ubuntu Core, you'll end up with a single flashable image that includes the OS as well as your ROS system all ready to go. I'll show you how in later parts of this series, but as you can see here, the factory process is pretty much just DD. Another question you need to ask yourself is, how is the base OS updated so as to remain secure? This is logically followed by, how do I update the stuff I have on top? Well, how is your software packaged? Are you still running from source? Have it on the ROS build farm? Use Bloom and then build the devs locally? None of these options are easy, and none of them make for an easy upgrade process, particularly if you consider robust upgrades, which we'll talk about in a sec. If you package your ROS system as a snap, all you'd need to do is release the update in the store, and all the deployed devices will automatically update themselves out of the box. This update happens randomly throughout the day, so I'm just running one manually here so you can see what it looks like. So what about the base OS? Well, it's updated in the same way, but if you're using one of the many Ubuntu Core reference devices, Canonical maintains the kernel and core snaps for you for the lifetime of the LTS. Another question to ask is, how is the device recovered if an update goes wrong? Have you ever tried powering off your computer during a kernel update? It happened to my wife recently and she got stuck at the grub prompt. It's not a difficult problem to solve, but it would be a lot harder if it happened on a headless production robot in my warehouse that I didn't even know ran Linux. Ubuntu Core is specifically designed to have robust upgrades. To try and demonstrate, I have an Ubuntu 16.04 VM here and I'm SSH'd into it. It has a slightly out of date version of Nextcloud on there. I'm manually refreshing it, but automatic updates would be no different. Now I'm going to be mean and I'm going to pull the plug on the VM right now. It downloaded the update itself, but it was in the middle of verifying its authenticity. Alright, let's fire it back up and SSH back into it. You'll see that it's not in any sort of nasty state, it just didn't complete the upgrade and kept the previous one. Nextcloud still works fine. Okay, let's try that again, slightly differently. I'm going to kill the VM again, though notice this time it downloaded and verified the update and was in the process of deactivating the old snap. I'll start it again and get back into it. Now this is interesting, you'll see that Nextcloud is disabled. Comparing the revision, you'll see that this is the old version of Nextcloud. It's disabled since that's what SnapD was doing when we killed the VM. Did we succeed in messing it up? Let's run SnapList again, and you'll see that not only did SnapD not mess up, but Nextcloud is now up to date. This is because SnapD keeps track of changes it has in progress, and in this case, it simply resumed the refresh once it booted. And as you can see, Nextcloud is working. So that's it for part one. I hope I've given some good justification on why Ubuntu Core is a good fit for production robotics. And in part two, we'll make a ROS prototype with the TurtleBot that we'll use throughout the rest of the series. I'll see you then.